Welcome to my transparent watercolor tutorial, Snowy Everett Road Bridge. This is a narrated step-by-step -step tutorial recorded at normal speed. This is the companion video to my Snowy Everett Road Bridge transparent watercolor demonstration, which is set to music at 3x speed so you can watch the evolution of the painting uninterrupted. The photo on the right was the inspiration for this painting, despite being in a different season. This is the same photo that I used for reference in my video Everett Road Bridge, which is a painting done in the same season as my reference photo. By changing my colors to a winter palette, I was still able to use the same photo because it has the information I need in terms of the drawing and the values, and the colors are optional. So I chose to use a winter palette, but I still use this same photo for reference even though it's in a completely different season. Because this is a winter scene, I'm going to do quite a bit of masking, and I'm going to use this uh, inexpensive squeeze bottle that I fill myself to put a bead of masking fluid down, and then I'll use this, uh, it's called a paint shaper, it's got a rubber tip on it, and I'll use this to help spread the bead of masking fluid. It's an economical solution uh, because masking fluid can get quite expensive. I do use fine line uh, masking fluid pens sometimes, however, when I have a lot of masking to do, I, I use these inexpensive squeeze bottles that I fill myself and I can put a bead down and then I can move it around with the uh, paint shaper that I have. The uh, masking fluid that I'm putting down right now is to give the indication of tree trunks, tree limbs, and it's a winter scene so snow sticks to the side of the tree and it lays on the limb and I'm going to preserve these white uh, area so that uh, after I remove it I can put a wash on top of it and then I can remove it and, and it will appear to have uh, given the appearance of uh, snow setting on the tree. Here I'm continuing on the other side of the composition. Um, I'm still using the squeeze bottle and here I'm giving the suggestion of some some limbs and some uh, tree trunks. Now I'm going to take a toothbrush and a jar of masking fluid. I'm going to dip the toothbrush in there and then I'm just going to splatter some of that masking fluid across my entire work surface. This is a snowy winter scene and I want to give this texture of uh, snow coming down on a winter's day. So I, I load up my toothbrush and I uh, splatter it onto the paper and I tap it against my finger and, and splatter it onto the paper and it gives a nice texture to, uh, to the painting and, and, it, and it makes a nice winter scene. It can be hard to keep the toothbrush from gumming up and one of the things that helps is if before you put it in the masking fluid, you put a little soapy water on it and that will help it clean up a little bit better. Now I'm going to take my squeeze bottle and I'm going to put uh, some masking fluid, a bead of the masking fluid on top of the rock shapes uh, to, again to preserve this area and it's going to just represent snow sitting on top of these rocks after I get done putting a wash over top. Here I'm applying the masking fluid to the shoreline uh, to get the same effect as I did on the rocks. And now I'm using the masking fluid to put some highlights into the water. So it's winter, but the water is still flowing in this uh, creek. And I'm using this mask of masking fluid to indicate uh, the current and the reflections of light in the water. And now after a lot of upfront masking, I'm ready to begin painting. So I'm beginning uh, with a mixture of burnt sienna, 
and ultramarine blue. I'm using this color to this color mixture to give the indication of the shadowed areas in the snow. And you can see I'm using a, a, a wash brush, a round wash brush, and I'm being very loose and liberal with my brush strokes. This mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna is heavy on the ultramarine blue side. These two colors are often paired and they, they complement one another and they make a nice neutral. So you can mix a gray with these two colors and later in the painting I'll uh, shift the mixture more towards the burnt sienna side so I have some worn tones to put on the trees. As I apply the paint, you can see that I'm uh, making a brush stroke and then I just leave it. I don't overwork it. Um, I don't fidget with it. I just put down a, uh, a brush stroke, make my statement, and uh, move on. Now I've taken my mixture uh, more towards burnt sienna. And actually, it's pretty much in the middle in terms of a mixture. It's, a, it's almost a gray that I have there. So I'm giving a suggestion of trees back there with this tone. And I'm going to warm it up a little bit with some more burnt sienna. So you can see now that I've added burnt sienna to it. And it's a little bit warmer. So right there at the top of the page, I have the cool blue, uh, a neutral gray. And I... Uh, warmer more burnt sienna tone all from the same two paints just different proportions different ratio of mixture and I'm using this spray bottle my fine mist sprayer to soften some of these edges and then help diffuse some of this color and it blends uh, on the page Here I'm going to take my uh, mixture that's leaning uh, towards the blue side and indicate some of the shadow area um, under and behind the uh, bridge. And you can see I am started with larger shapes and then I'll work my way down to smaller shapes. And I'm doing a lot of painting actually in negative space. You can see that the covered bridge start to take shape but I haven't really painted it, it's just the area around it. And now I'm going to take uh, a mixture that has um, ultramarine blue, uh, a little bit of burnt sienna, but I'm coming in with some viridian in that to give it that greenish tone, kind of make it uh, look like an icy winter uh, flow in this creek. I'm going to take uh, a bit of a neutral wash and just touch it underneath the edge of the roof to give some shadow uh, underneath that snow. It's still a mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Here I'm going to start putting uh, a reddish tone on this covered bridge. This is a mixture of quinacrid and coral and uh, royal blue. The wash I'm putting on is pretty much a flat wash. Uh, not, a lot of times if I were painting this covered bridge, I do a bit more dry brush to get some texture in there and the texture of the wood. But uh, I'm going to have just a little bit of indication of that. I don't want the texture on the covered bridge to compete with the texture of the snow. I've put uh, masking fluid on this, splattered on this whole composition to give the effect of snow falling. And if I do a lot of texture on this covered bridge, that uh, the effect of the, the snow falling, the texture of that is just going to get lost if I do much dry brush. So I have a little bit on there to indicate that there is uh, some panels on this bridge, but for the most part it's a flat wash. And when I remove the masking, uh, 
fluid, it will it will uh, highlight the the snow instead of the texture on the bridge. To this point, I've been working with larger shapes and working with light to middle value. Now I'm going to start to give some definition to some of these forms in the composition. And here I've got a smaller brush with a dark value. It's a mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, just a very uh, saturated mixture. And I'm just giving an indication of some darks on these rocks. The rocks show through the, the uh, underside of that snow sitting on top. And this starts to give some uh, definition and some more contrast to this composition. I've been putting these, these touches of value on the shoreline and under the rocks and now I'm coming up on this hillside a little bit to give the indication of the slope of that hill. And I'm getting the shadow area underneath the covered bridge. This is a much larger uh, dark valued shape than what I've done so far and it's still very cool dark. It's leaning more towards the ultramarine blue than the burnt sienna. As I put in some of these dark shapes, I'm trying to use them to give the indication of the slope of the hillside that's there. I'm starting to take this darker tone to show the, uh, sh the shadowed areas of this covered bridge. So on the entryway, and then I'll start working into some of these uh, spaces in between the, the, the wood of the bridge. I want to send this background back a little bit so that I'm going to use a, uh, a mid-value cool blue tone and I'm going to apply that back there to give more of a uh, feeling of distance and help bring the uh, bridge shape forward. It also reinforces some of the edges on the, the slope where the snow is and, and makes them stand out a little bit more too. bringing this middle value all the way over to the left side of the composition and into the trees and letting the edge of that covered bridge get lost. I'm taking the same cool middle value wash into the foreground where these rocks are so I can uh, indicate a little bit more where the shadowed areas are on the, on the rocks. I'm going to take that, that blue tone and I'm going to hit a little bit more on the covered bridge to give a little deeper shadow underneath the edge of the snow and the, the snowy roof. As I paint this, uh, the under underside of this, the edge of this covered bridge, I don't do one line that goes the whole length of the bridge. I just put kind of dots and dashes just to give the indication that there's a shadow there but I don't just want to have one continuous line that goes from end to end. Uh, it's much more interesting to have it broken up with different size shapes. I'm taking a dark mixture, uh, again, of the ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, but almost an equal mix of the two to give me a, a dark gray. And then I'm, I'm putting indication of the shadow side of these trees. So, at, towards the end here, when I pull off the masking fluid, the, there's going to be a very uh, white side exposed, which will indicate where snow is, is on the side of the tree. And then I have this neutral, uh, these, these neutral value darks on the other side of the tree. And then just as I was doing under the bridge, when I paint these, I don't paint one straight line that goes from bottom to top. 
I, I break my lines up and I vary the width of them and the length of them. Some are some are uh, short and wide, and some are just narrow. Some are just little dots, but um, you don't want them all to look the same. You just don't want to have a bunch of straight line trees standing there because that's just not how things look naturally. But it's much more interesting when you can break up the line and the linear into linear shapes and um, get some texture going at the same time, drag your brush along. And I'm some of this texture is helped by the fact that I have this masking fluid that I splattered on this uh, surface before I started painting. I've come across the back and I've been indicating where these trees are at using a similar tone and again just breaking those lines up and give just giving an indication of a tree there or a limb I still want to push this background uh, back further so on the left side of this composition I'm coming in with a much darker wash that's still uh, burnt sienna ultramarine blue just a uh, more pigment of each and um, I'm taking this on the left side here just to send that area back and it's kind of a cool icy blue I'm taking some of that same tone um, down the slope just to help reinforce um, the features of that the of the landscape there the contour of the land that's what one of the things you want to do when you can as you're applying a brush stroke is try and contour the surface that you're uh, trying to define in a manner that it helps define the the plane of the of the object or the surface that you're working on when you're on the side of a building, sometimes your strokes can be uh, in a manner that they contour the shape and they help uh, better define what's going on. And, it, and it's much more interesting. I'm taking a darker value into the water here. And this is um, my ultramarine and burnt sienna mixture with uh, some viridian mixed in to give it that uh, cool green tone. And I'm just giving the indication there that there's there's some current still going on even though it's wintry uh, it's a winter scene and there's a lot of ice and snow there's still an icy flow to the creek that's uh, being painted I want to give uh, a little more indication of what's going on on the, the surface of this bridge and as I said I don't want to use a lot of dry brush so I'm just giving the indication of some boards and uh, I'm going to soften those up a little bit just um, just a light indication of the the boards and the panels that make up this bridge I'm about to remove the mask but before I do I'm going to take a, a dark value paint and just give a light splatter across the composition so when I remove the mask I'm going to have the the, the white um, of a paper coming through where the masking fluid was but I want to have some of the same texture as a dark value so to do that I'm just just tapping with my brush to give a little bit of a dark valued splatter that will complement the, the the white that comes through after I remove the the masking fluid Now I'm going to take my rubber pickup eraser and start removing the masking fluid that I applied uh, before I began this paint. So you just rub it on the masking fluid, it lifts it off, and um, you have to make sure that you get all the, the little drops that were splattered across the composition. So I, I'll constantly rub my hand just to see if I can feel any and make sure I've removed it all. But as I do this, you can see the white of the paper being exposed and it just enhances the, the snowy, wintry feeling of the painting. It's, uh, it's quite a bit of masking that I apply, but to me it's the right technique for this scene. I didn't want to start out and just say I'm going to do a painting with a lot of masking, but I know it's a good way to get the texture and get the snowflakes 
and give the indication of snow sitting on top of uh, rocks and on the uh, it's the branches and the trees it's a good way to get that effect so here most of the masking fluid has been removed and you can see that it really has revealed what looks like a very snowy winter scene often when I, I use masking I still have a, a bit of painting to do after I remove the mask but however in this type of a scene this wintry scene I pretty much leave it on to the end because I don't want to lose the texture of the snowflakes and um, keep in mind as you look at this this is a very snowy scene and there's a lot of white in this composition however there's been no white paint used this is strictly transparent watercolor all the white that you see is the white of the paper coming through in order to accomplish this this requires you to do some advanced planning so that you're planning for the whites in your composition So that's the snowy version of Everett Bridge. You, as you recall, my reference photo was anything but a winter scene. However, it gave me the information that I needed to be able to, to paint this as a winter scene. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial of the snowy version of Everett Road Bridge, and thanks for watching.